Hello, hello, uh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our show titled Speak of Africa. It is a new week, and we're very happy to bring you this show. Maybe before we start the show of today, we want to thank you for watching our last video enthusiastically. You guys watch a lot. You share the video a lot. And we want to say thank you for the trust and confidence you've placed in us. We started this show for you. This is your show. And we're also very happy because we noticed that you are doing what we asked you to do. You started commenting again. Yes, start commenting. Comment a lot. We started this show because we wanted to create a platform for Africans to talk about issues. Just like Kwame Nkrumah, he said, we are not east moving west, we are not moving east, we are moving forward. So in order for Africa to move forward, we need a show like this where Africans can discuss African problems. Every week we come up with a topic and we try to discuss this topic with you. We look at a new cycle in the motherland and we try to touch on those subjects that are dear to Africans, things that we want you to talk about. So let's talk about Africa. Let's speak of Africa. When we look at the week, we say to ourselves, social injustice. You guys keep telling us about unemployment problems. The youth is unemployed. The youth feel that the old people are ruling Africa and they are forgotten young people. The youth are worried about their future. Shall they make or shall they mar? That's the question. So it's a dilemma facing a lot of young people. They, are, they don't have confidence in their leaders. They think we have a paucity of leadership in Africa. The old people sit tight. They don't want to leave. Yet they don't have much to contribute to Africa. Every week we share your dreams, we share your aspirations, we share your concerns. And we use this platform to express your thoughts so that people in the international community should know the problems of Africa as young people. Okay? A portrait of Africa as a young man. A portrait of Africa as a young woman. That's what we do on this show. We try to project the needs and wants of Africans. On the show of today, we realize that education is very important. If young people have to emerge, if they have to focus on working hard and succeeding in the world of today, education is important. Colonial education was designed to help the colonial master. Today, the kind of education that can help Africans is functional education. I've talked about it. Functional education means a market-oriented form of education. We don't just want to train you so that you do what the colonial master wants you to do. We want you to be able to get training, the training that will help you get better jobs so that you can excel and aspire to a better life, irrespective of where you are in the world. You are a global citizen. If you find yourself in Nigeria, you should be able to perform. If you find yourself in Rwanda, you should be able to perform. If you find yourself in London, you should be able to perform. So that's the kind of education that we want Africans to get. And I call it functional education. And it will give you the magic cards you need to win and win big in the world economy. And that's why we keep focusing on functional education. We want you to be a genuine intellectual, the way my former professor, Dr. Bernard Fallon, used to say, the nature and and purpose of university education is to create a genuine intellectual. And that was his message to every African freshman. That remains my message to the African youth. You want to develop yourself so that you can have good education. We are not just talking. We are also supporting young Africans in the venue of education. We are coming up with a new platform, a new training platform for people who are interested in the profession of pharmacy. If you want to be trained as a pharmacy technician, if you're a foreign graduate looking for a way to practice pharmacy in America, or if you are a USA student attending a pharmacy school, we are developing a training program that can really help you. So that's what this show is about. Unlike other shows, we don't just want you to laugh. We want to prepare you for the future. So we have a website we are developing, which is going to host the content we have for this program. 
this is going to be an online university, okay? Where we we'll start with pharmacy, then we're going to add other subjects later. We're we'll starting with pharmacy so that you can train yourself to become a pharmacy technician. If you're a foreign graduate who finds themselves in America, we want you to transition to become a pharmacist. We want you to handle the foreign equivalency exam that all foreign graduates have to write. After you pass the exam, then we're going to help you pass the American exam to become a pharmacist. In addition, if you are a USA pharmacy student, we are also going to help you to pass and become a doctor of pharmacy quickly. Because we have a lot of people, professors, professionals who will be teaching all these programs. They are ready. And we have the infrastructure. We are building a big website. You're going to see it, pharmacyprof.com. It's going to host. We have three learning platforms we're going to introduce on this uh, channel. The first one is called Canvas. Canvas is a system that is used by schools such as Harvard University, Yale University, for their online learning. In addition, we're going to introduce Google Classroom. Google Classroom is the second platform we're going to add on our website, which will make it easy. It will facilitate the training of young people to get into different jobs in pharmacy. Third, we're going to use Zoom. Most of you are already pop, uh, comfortable with Zoom. We're going to also make Zoom a part and parcel of our infrastructure, online infrastructure for training in pharmacy. As I say, we're beginning with pharmacy, but we're not going to end there. We're going to start with pharmacy, and this will start probably in May. We're building the website. Before the end of April, the website will be ready. So if you have your friends who want to get training into high-paying jobs, pharmacy is like a colossus. If you want to make big money, you can start small. I always like starting things small. You can start as a farm tech, then become a pharmacist. Then after that, you have a whole lot of high-paying jobs. We want to introduce you to the job market so you can get better-paying jobs. In addition, I told you about my book. The Miraculous Millionaire. Amazon.com is auctioning this book now because they want people to buy the book. I usually sell the, this book for $24. Amazon is selling it now for $4, okay? Just $4. So you can buy this book and even share with your friends. The book has a whole lot of information that can help you get ahead, especially in terms of education. We're going to start some classes too that would focus on the content of this book to help you get ahead financially. So we have a lot of plans for you. So this is not just a news channel. We try to do more. We're going to become a virtual university. It doesn't matter where you are, you'll be able to attend classes in our university. We're going to make it possible. Okay? And that's Ayuk University. So let's go with our news segment. We start the news segment by focusing on the problems of youth. Our youth has a lot of problems. They are worried about unemployment. They are worried about social injustice. Our youth feels the power that be have dish dead on them. They don't like what they are getting. Okay? They think things could be better. So they have been running away, going to Europe in search of greener pastures. But yet, some who are at home are very unhappy they are following our advice, and they are rebelling against the powers that be. We spoke to you a lot about Senegal. For over a year, we've been covering Senegal, and you rewarded us by paying attention to our last video. We've been telling you that the youth in Senegal are going to rebel, and they did. Now they left prison and moved into the presidency. Makisa <laughs> had to run away. So you see how life is? The guy who thought he was powerful, Makisa got into an airplane and ran to Morocco. Now he has to go to his paymasters. He has been sacrificing Africa for foreign governments. Now he has to go to them, France, and get his pension from there. He's really ashamed because he knows what is awaiting him. Already in Senegal, Ousmane Sankor and his protege President 
Basiru Diomefe, they're going to come up with a lot of new programs. This is a government for change. They're going to change a lot of stuff. So we know Makisa was just afraid of what may happen to him later. So it was better for him to run away. He did not want to be tried and sent to jail. He's afraid of jail. But this is a guy who was quick to send these other guys to jail. Now he's afraid to go to jail. So you see why we told you before. A lot of these bullies are cowards. Makisal is a bully. Makisal is a coward. Okay? So let's forget about it. Let's say, Senegal, you're going to inspire the rest of Africa with young people's revolution. So Ambazonia, we know yeah, revolution is stalling, but we know all is not uh, lost because you still believe in freedom. Your colonial masters from France think that they will keep you in slavery, but we know you aspire to attaining freedom, real independence. And we know it's going to come, because already some people are saying that, oh, Ambazonian revolution is over. No, it's not over. The people are no longer at ease, yet you can see stirrings of revolution still in Ambazonia. The guys are planning. In fact, even uh, you can see uh, President Sako Ikome. He, he too is uh, making plans. Then you see Sisuku in jail. He too is making plans. So a lot of these people in Ambazonia are making plans. So do not write them off. If you write them off, you'll be making a big mistake because La Republic itself is in a mess. Okay? La Republic of Cameroon is a mess because you look. Today, we got news that Boko Haram hit in the north around that Lake Chad Basin. The area is very porous. So the, the militants of Boko Haram move around very quickly. The BRs as, as soldiers, B, I don't know why they cannot really find these guys. The guys dodge, hide, seek, hide and seek. They're playing that kind of game, cat and mouse game. But Boko Haram chooses the best moment to strike. And this week, we understand they killed over 27 people in La Republic of Cameroon, in the north. Is BR worried about it? He doesn't really know what is happening. His uh, handlers are ha doing the job for him. So BI is finished. And we think, even though people keep talking about uh, 2025, we think Maurice Campton needs to listen to what the other people are telling him. Even though BI's handlers do not want the opposition to unite, the best thing to do to prevent BI from running for president in 2025 is for the opposition to unite Forget about all the bribery and corruption. Don't take bribes from Bia. Tell him you don't need his stolen money. Go and vote Bia out. That's the solution. Go and vote Bia out. It's true. Bia stole the last victory from Maurice Camto. But you want to beat him so badly that even if he tries to steal, the whole world will see that, oh, no, Mr. Bia, you lost. So beat him so badly. So opposition, unite, unite, and unite. Already, there's a whole lot of mess in La Republic of Cameroon. You told us a lot of news about uh, Chantal Bia. She is uh, the de facto president, La Femme Fatale du Cameroon. She's running the country because her aged husband is finished. So she holds Ferdinand Gongo on a leash like a little dog, a puppy, okay? So what can she do? Well, the bad news is she has been using Fondation Chantal Bia as a way to burnish the credentials of her husband. But today, there's a scandal emerging from this uh, Fondation Chantabia. This foundation was supposed to help the poor, mothers who have to deal with birthing issues. But we hear the people have not been paid, the workers have not been paid. While Mrs. B. Paul Bia Chantal is living a luxurious life, a glamorous life, the people who are working for her foundation have not been paid. So they are rebelling, they are protesting. So that's the sad news we're getting from La Republic du Cameroon. So it's a big scandal. Why can she not come up with the money to pay these people quickly so that they should not make noise? Well, sometimes people don't really understand their own problems until it's too late. But that's the reality now with La Republic du Cameroon. Chantal has a big problem, big problem, a lion grow problem. But there is no problem with that, but there is no problem. But we are here to explain. You understand? 
So that's basically what is happening. So now we leave La Republic of Cameroon and we'll go to the Central African Republic. Well, Assange Tuadera is still president. He doesn't want to leave. He's sitting tight. He has sought a rapprochement with Moscow. So Moscow is protecting him. When you talk about the Wagner Group, they have really been in the Central African Republic. But the sad story in the Central African Republic is sexual assault, rape. A lot of women are victims of sexual assault. And sometimes Russians are the ones committing this assault. These are not even people from the Central African Republic. They are Russians. The Russians are raping women from Central African Republic. There's even a story of a young lady who was raped in front of her own children by Russian teachers. People who come to train soldiers in Central African Republic, they end up raping women. So that's the role that Russia is playing in this part of the world. It's really sad that countries like America, Western countries like America, are forcing our people into the arms of bad people like the Russian people of Vladimir Putin. It's really sad. But what can we do? We don't, the people don't really have a choice. It's like you have to choose between two evils. Sometimes the people feel like Russia is a lesser evil than the Western evil. So that's why you see them rushing to Russia. Okay? They are rushing to Russia because the Western world is not a more palatable option. They like to exploit. They support exploitative powers like France. That's what is happening. Next, we take you to DRC Congo. Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Real treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational, annual, and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same-day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301-593-4897. Cry, the beloved Congo. Congo is a divided country. When you look at this country, this is supposed to be the richest country in Africa. But its people are living in abject poverty. Foreigners are stealing all their resources. When you look at the East, you have a lot of neighbors. Most of them participate in the stealing of the looting of this country. So that's why you always have wars going on. As you can see, a lot of people were killed. Islamic insurgents kill people, a lot of people. We hear the kill, kill over 10 people. When we watch what is happening in Congo, it hurts us so bad because we cry. We just try to imagine what would life have, have been in Congo if Patrice Lumumba had lived as the president of this country. If you had leave, what would have happened if we were the one running the country? And if you look at some of the pictures that we'll share with you, you see Joseph Desire Mobutu standing beside Lumumba. So sometimes the person who really kills you is not far away. It's somebody who's very close to you. So it's, it really hurts when we see the picture of Lumumba 
with uh, Mobutu standing by his side. What a betrayal. So when we look at the Congo story, it hurts. It hurts so much because this is a country with plenty, yet there is war every day because foreigners want to steal the resources of this country. Okay? From Congo, we'll take you to Kenya. In Kenya, we want to talk about an author, James Ngugi. Ngugi Wathiongo. We understand he lives now in Atlanta, Georgia, and people who love him as a writer want to celebrate his life. So we think this is something positive. I remember as a young boy, I read many of his novels, A Grain of Wheat, Whip Not Child, The River Between. He was such a great author. I love his writing because he focused on the subject of decolonization, the failures of decolonization. He wrestled with so many important issues, and we think his works are still relevant today. As the people are trying to celebrate him, we think we also should celebrate him on this show because we think he's a great African writer. He represents the aspirations of the African people, the common mind. He's not a writer just for Kenya. He's a writer for the entire Af African continent. So we love that. Next, we take it to Mali. In Mali, you know, the junta headed by Asimi Goita is still there. But the African Union, the organization we used to call OAU, is trying to ask Asimi Goita's government to transition to civilian rule. They want them to give a timetable. When are they going to transition to civilian rule? It seems as if Asimi Goita is not giving them any answer. What about Niger? Well, Niger will have further rapprochement with Russia. This week, we saw pictures of Russian planes landing in Niger, carrying a lot of uh, military hardware and military advisors. So you can see that when the Americans were kicked out of Niger, General Tiani just brought the Russians in. So he already had a plan. America out, Russia in. France out, Russia in. Russia, Iran. Those are the guys that General Tiani wants to deal with. So isn't this sad? When we see the West losing hearts and minds in Africa, it hurts because African people love freedom. You may criticize Vladimir Putin as a dictator, but he knows how to win the hearts and minds of Africans. He tells them nice stories. America is a colonizer. France is a colonizer. Russia has never colonized you. Russia will try to liberate you. Russia fought for your independence and decolonization. So Russia just wants to get a piece of the action. Okay? But the truth about it is sometimes Russia gets too much. And this is the sad thing. So Niger, a country that France has exploited for too long, is now in the arms, the bosom of Russia. Isn't this sad? Then we'll take you now to Nigeria. In Nigeria, a lot of the stories that we saw had to deal with uh, the trauma people have felt over bandits and kidnapping. All these kidnappers, bandits, kidnappers, bandits, kidnappers. You remember even the Shibuk girl, bring our girls back. There are pictures that are unflattering and the people are just traumatized by all of these terrible events. Okay? Then of course, some of you also showed us pictures of uh, what happened to the former Mrs. Abiola. You guys remember Emko Abiola? Uh, one, he was the richest Nigerian at one point. Everybody knew about MKO, MKO. He won the election, but they killed him because they didn't want him to run the country. So resentment over this remains. This week, we saw pictures in Oyo, which is probably like over three hours away from Lagos. This is a Yoruba uh, place. Now they are talking about the Yoruba nation, Yoruba nation, Yoruba nation. This is not the first time we hear people talk about the Yoruba nation. Just as you've been hearing about the indigenous uh, nation of Biafra, people have been talking about the Yoruba nation. Do you guys remember the famous Sunday ago? who brought you a lot of his stories on this show. You remember Sunday ago? Eventually he was chased after a lot of trouble. He found refuge in Germany. 
But we told you before, militarization will never succeed. You can chase Sunday go out, but some other person will take his place. So we are always very prophetic on this show. We said it before. When you silence Sunday ago, you have done nothing. Because other people are going to replace Sunday ago. Now it is Mrs. Abiola who is talking. So what they did, we hear they went to the governor's mansion and took it over. And it took a lot of fighting between government forces and the supporters of Mrs. Abiola to bring calm to the governor's mansion and the state. So isn't this sad? Which is why we keep telling you, Bola Tinibu, we are trying on the economic side. The economy is recovering. We've noticed that the Naira has gained ground a little bit against the dollar. Before it was like 1,900 Naira for one dollar, but things have changed a little bit. So we like what we're seeing. But the economic successes are not enough. To make them adequate, you need to have social successes. Let there be security, okay? Nigerians need security. In a nation, as a republic, the best thing a government can give a people is security, the right to be free from kidnappers and bandits. OK? So let this be. Next, we take you to South Africa. South Africa is having elections in May. But the ANC party is bogged down by bribery and corruption, a history of bribery and corruption. Are they going to make it? People are afraid ANC is losing ground. What about Sudan? In Sudan, we see that the war has been going on for over a year, but the world doesn't care. Africans are killing themselves. The world doesn't care. Let Africans kill themselves. That's the position of the international community. Then what about Togo? In Togo, we have another case of a sit tight president. This is a young guy who to, whose family has been running Togo for over 60 years. You know the story of Togo. Silvanus Olympio was killed by the French because they wanted to install a puppet, Eyadema, Nasingbe Eyadema. This is a brute with no education. He killed a, a trained guy from the London School of Economics because he wanted to create reform, economic reform for his country. Now the Eyadema family has been messing up with the country. His son now wants to run for a third term. He fakes every election victory. He makes a mockery of democracy. Isn't this sad? People now are protesting against Fore Nasingbe, Eadema. They are protesting. The change of constitution is illegal. Legislative elections are illegal. But that's a lot of Africans. Togo, Senegal should inspire you. You may be able to do better things. Get your inspiration from Senegal, and you'll be free soon. So folks, we'll come to the end of our show. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. need tax preparation services we can help contact pj tax service america's only full-time income tax preparers like the good old doctor we do not close our doors after april 15th in fact we stay open all year round in order to serve you we are located at 11207a lockwood drive silver spring maryland 20901 make an appointment today with prince ojong your tax expert Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.